harp and you remember that our John 15 passage, it kind of ends with that matter of joy. When we abide in Christ, when we are walking with Christ on a daily basis, fruit is produced. One of that fruit is joy, okay? Peace, all right? Long-suffering. It's when you bear long with somebody. Gentleness, the way we treat other people. Goodness, all right? Just wholesomeness. Faith, all right? Meekness, strength under control. Temperance, all right? Holding back your body. Temperance. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, being upright and truth. Can you listen? This is real fruit. We often talk about spiritual people. Talk about this guy's spiritual, that guy's spiritual. You know, a guy's not spiritual about how much he knows about Bible trivia. He's not spiritual about how much, by how much he can look down on you or look down on me or I can look down on you or you can look down on me. You're not spiritual by how many rules that you have and standards that you have are, that are beyond your church constitution. Some fundamental churches believe that spirituality has to do with how much you abstain from everything. And the more spiritual you are, you, know, you, you turn into an Amish or a Mennonite person almost. Okay? That is not, if you go beyond God's word, you're not being more spiritual you are literally being legalistic. You're adding to the scripture. Okay? Now listen. What makes a person spiritual is this fruit, the Holy Spirit fruit. When we walk with Jesus Christ in the illustration, I am the vine, you're the branches. The closer I walk with the Lord Jesus in dependence on him, on, in loyalty to him, in close fellowship with him on a daily basis, this fruit comes out of me comes out of me. On Monday, I was not very fruitful in this way. What stra the strange thing is that I'm studying my personal devotions in 1 Corinthians. And I came to the passage early in the morning that said to Paul that you're not, sp that Paul said to them, remember, you're not spiritual, you're carnal, for wherein dwells strife and envying in you. You know, you're still babies. You're still flesh human people, he was actually saying. Fleshly people. And I thought, today, I want to be a spiritual person. I don't want to have strife, and I don't want to have whatever. Well, I want to tell you, I must have had all those thoughts to myself. Because <laughs> it wasn't long. Monday was a holiday. So I found myself tearing into my children, barking this and barking that. Pastors aren't very good on Mondays anyhow. I'll just tell you what. We're usually wasted, okay? Now listen, this whole back to the illustration of John 15, fruitfulness in our life This in this point, when I'm walking close to the Lord Jesus, when I'm walking in close independence on the Lord, when I'm walking as close to Him, I am drawing my strength and my power from Him. What, what's going to come out of me? Love, joy, long-suffering, everything opposite of a sourpuss Christian. Everything opposite of what me, my body, wants to do. The Lord wants us to be fruitful in this area. Fruitful. You will be the most spiritual person when you are yielding this Holy Spirit fruit. It doesn't come by deciding it tonight. It comes by walking close to the vine. It comes by how close you will live your life with Christ. It's not demanded in our life. I wish that I could call for an invitation. Everybody come. How many are going to have fruit of the Spirit? Everybody come. We're all going to do it. All right, that, it can't be achieved that way any more than on Monday, me walking out of my office downstairs, that I could in the flesh put on these things. Now listen. We are to be fruitful. Number six. The fruit is here. This is real fruit that I am growing in love, joy, peace, all these virtues of the Holy Spirit. Number seven is persecution for Christ. Look on the board or you're welcome to turn there. Philippians 1, 21 through 22 says, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Here's the deal. You remember the context. Paul was making a decision. Jesus, do you, can you imagine the Lord giving you a decision of whether you want to stay on this earth or whether you want to die and go to heaven? 
And he, in the context, he says, I know if I stay on this earth, it's much more profitable for you because I'm going to minister to you as an apostle. And then he says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It was also in the context of this chapter that the Holy Spirit had told him that persecutions waited for him. You remember this? Waited for us. When he was saying to die is gain, he was talking about persecution. Now look what he says in verse 22. But if I live in the flesh, if I live here in my body, this is the fruit of my labor. What is persecution? Yet what I shall choose, I what not. Or I'm not sure how I'm going to answer the Lord of whether I want to go to heaven or stay here, which is profitable for you. When you see in verse number 22 him say, this is the fruit of my labor, He's referring to earlier in the chapter of persecution, the possibility that he was going to die. Let me give you another verse of scripture, folks, here tonight. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall do what? Suffer what? Persecution. Is this world a friend to grace to lead us on to God? Is this world excited about you living for Jesus? If you live godly in Christ, if you walk close to your Lord, if you live the way you should righteously, you're going to cause friction. And everyone who lives godly in Christ will suffer persecution with friends who don't want to live for Christ, with family who don't want to live for Christ, don't want you to live for Christ, with even neighbors, with even co-workers, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Paul says it's fruit, the fruit of your labor, the fruit of his labor was persecution. Now let me ask you a question. Do you like to be persecuted? Do you like when, let me just ask you this question. I'm not saying like Fox's Book of Martyrs, but how many of you feel like you have suffered some scoffing or some rebuke or something you know, how many of you know a little bit uh, about persecution? Just maybe even a little, okay? Up and back down, okay. You know what it's like to be laughed at as, as you express your ideas. Oh, you believe that the world was made in six literal days. Yeah, right. Don't you know the science? Nincompoop. Okay, listen. Listen to me. Persecution is fruit unto the Lord. He is exalted by it. He is, he is exalted when we take a stand for something, when we express the gospel, when people don't want us to. We're the savor of life into life and death into death. We are, when we stand and, and exalt him, even when everyone else is, is looking down at the Lord, when we stand, when we say, please don't use my Lord's name in vain, in, in a loving way, a loving rebuke, the Lord is honored by persecution. It is fruit the Bible says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. I don't like to be persecuted, but it is fruit. It is good when we are persecuted. It is, it, it, we are standing for righteousness sake. It is fruit. John 15, the Lord wants us to bear fruit. Here's number eight fruit, vocal praise. Hebrews 13, 15 says this. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Do you know that fruit in your Christian life is as easy as praising the Lord vocally? The lips, the fruit of your lips. Everybody, you know, everybody, everybody would agree to this. My question is, you, how many times today did you praise the Lord vocally? You know, this is a public kind of thing. This is not praying. Now, I, I want to take, a, I want to pause and just ask a minute because I, I think that we need to think this through a little bit. When do we have opportunities to do this? What are some ideas of opportunities to be fruitful to praise God? Give me some scenarios or get, when, when do you have this opportunity? When can you make this opportunity? Yes. Okay, now that is on something very small. 
Okay, and but that's more of, of prayer. You know, that's more of between you and God. When do you have an opportunity to public or how could you take opportunity? Yes. Okay, there you go. Okay, giving, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Scripture tells us that. So in those times, giving praise where it is due. That's good, yeah. Right, giving, there you go, there you go, opportunity. But you know what the deal is? We're faithless, and we don't believe that there's any praise that, that God deserved. It was coincidental. They fixed the car in time so he could go somewhere on time. We've got to open up our, our, our faith if we're going to praise him. Yeah, where's another time? Okay, there you go. Okay, a habit of praise. Yes. So you used an opportun a very common opportunity to bring God's praise. Okay, somebody else. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yes. That's good. One more. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that, again, takes faith as well. These are all areas of praise. Praise with our lips. It's very particular here. And it's a New Testament verse. It's not a psalm. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. God says that's fruit to him. And that's something that bears fruit. Isn't it odd that uh, the all-powerful being of the universe even cares if we say praise you, Lord? Isn't it very odd that he even cares? I mean, why would he care? Yet he has chosen that the trophies of his grace, that when we sing, we just sang praise to the grace of God, whatever. That's another time. In church, there's huge opportunities. We've got to look at it as true worship, fruit of praising the Lord at all times, of giving God credit where there's due. But he says it's fruit. It's something that brings him great glory. The ninth one is making peace with other people. Very simple, James 3.18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. It's kind of a confusing verse, but it, it just basically is pointing out this. You making peace to other people and with other people when possible is fruit to the Lord. Most of the time we're good fruit, we're strife fruiters. We're fruit strifers, however you want to say it. No, no, we need to be bringing forth fruit that makes peace with other people. Now, you can't have peace with other people when they are doing something against God, okay? You, you do need to take a stand, okay? There, the Bible says as much as is within you, live peaceably with all men. There are times that you can't be. But here's another thing of fruit, is there, and I'll just say it. Are you wrong with somebody tonight? Are you wrong? Is there somebody that you need to make peace with and bring fruit to righteousness?